we've got a pretty cool geometry problem. So our goal is to find all natural numbers m and n so that this triangle is possible. Well, let's look closely at this triangle. So notice it's got side lengths of m plus 1 over n, m plus 2 over n, and m plus 3 over n. And then its altitude is m. Okay, so, well, how could we do this? I think there's probably a couple of strategies, but the strategy that we will take is to take this bottom line segment and split it into pieces. So I'll call this piece on the left-hand side X and this piece on the right-hand side Y, and then exploit the fact that now we've got a triangle over here on the left, which is right, and we have another right triangle over here on the right. And since those are right triangles, we can apply the Pythagorean theorem. So in particular, we know that x squared plus m squared will be equal to m plus 3 over n squared. And so again, that's from applying the Pythagorean theorem on the left-hand right triangle. And now let's do it on the right-hand right triangle. So let's see, that's going to give us y squared plus m squared equals, so now we're going to have m plus 1 over n squared. But now looking at each of these, let's observe that if we take the difference of these two equations, the m's will cancel. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. Let's take this difference. So that's going to give us x squared minus y squared equals... And now, instead of like taking just the straight difference of this, I'm going to recognize that as a difference of squares, and I'm going to do the factorization. So notice that the factorization will give us the difference of these two, as well as the sum of these two. Well, it's the product of those two things. So the difference of these two will be simply 2 over n, and then the sum of these two will be 2m plus 4 over n. So of course, we can factor some stuff out here, and we'll have 4 over n times, let's see, m plus 2 over n. And then furthermore, we can maybe factor out this left-hand side as x minus y times x plus y. But now let's observe that x plus y is simply m plus 2 over n, given that x and y form two pieces of the bottom of this triangle. So that means we can go here and take this x plus y and write it as m plus 2 over n. But now we can take this m plus 2 over n and this m plus 2 over n on both sides of the equation and simply cancel them. So we're just dividing the entire equation by that. And this gives us this nice expression of x minus y equals 4 over n. And now let's take that expression and couple it with the sum of x and y, which we've already talked about. So that's m plus 2 over n. And now let's use this system of equations, which we could clearly solve for x and y pretty easily. So notice taking the sum of these two equations will cancel the y's out on the left-hand side and leave us with 2x equals, let's see, that's going to be m plus 6 over n. But that tells us that x is equal to m, let's see, over 2 plus 3 over n. So we've got something like that going on for x. And now, well, what about for our y term? Well, we can take the second equation and then subtract the first equation. That'll cancel out the x part. And that'll leave us with 2 times y equals m, and then it'll be minus 2 over n. But of course, we can divide by 2 here, and we'll have y equals m over 2, and then it'll be minus 1 over n when all is said and done. And now, perhaps for a, just a little bit of simplification, I'm going to take those expressions for x and y and put them together as one rational expression. So that means we'll have x is equal to, let's see, that'll be m times n, and then plus 6 over 2 times n, 
And then likewise, we'll have y is equal to m times n minus 2 over 2 times n. Okay, so now what I want to do is perhaps we'll bring this expression for x and y up to the top, and then we'll finish everything off. Thanks for sticking around this long into the video. If you're enjoying the video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, consider subscribing. It really helps us out. Okay, so previously we took this bottom edge of our triangle and split it into two pieces, x and y, which we in turn solved in terms of m and n. And now we want to do the last step here, which will be to focus on this right triangle over here on the right side. And what we'll do is use the Pythagorean theorem to express m squared in terms of these two sides. So let's do that. So we'll have m squared is, so that's going to be m plus 1 over n squared minus y squared. But let's observe that this y squared is mn minus 2 over 2n quantity squared. Okay. So next up, what I'll do just for some simplification is to take this m plus 1 over n, and I want to write it as mn plus 1 over n, just to simplify it a bit. And then one more thing I'm going to do is maybe multiply everything by 2 in the numerator and the denominator to give myself the same denominator as this. So that'll be 2mn and then plus 2 over 2 times n then we have that squared. Now I went through all of that work because now I can square that denominator in each of those terms and then factor it out. That'll leave me with 1 over 4 times n squared, and then I'll have 2mn plus 2 squared, and then minus mn minus 2 squared. And now I can use a difference of squares factorization on these terms right here. This mn times 2 plus 2, and this mn minus 2 squared. So let's see, I'll still have the 1 over 4n squared out front, which looking at it, I'm going to actually multiply that up to the other side of the equation. And so that gives us 4m squared n squared is equal to... So now we'll have the difference of those two, which is going to be, let's see, mn plus 4. So we get that because it's 2mn plus 2 minus mn minus 2. But of course, the plus 2 and the minus 2 will double up to 4. So that's the difference of those two times the sum of those two. But the sum of those two will be 3 times m times n. Okay, so we're left with something like this. But now I can multiply out that right-hand side, and I'll be left with 3m squared n squared plus 12 times m times n. So we're there. Now I'll take that 3m squared n squared over to the other side of the equation, and I'll see that I have m squared n squared uh, equals 12mn. Okay, but now we're pretty much home free. And observe now we can maybe divide both sides by m times n. We know neither m nor n is 0. And so that gives us m times n equals 12. Okay, but now we're pretty much done because check it out. Our goal is to find all m and n so that this is possible, but we just showed that that was equivalent as to showing that, or sorry, finding all natural numbers m and n that have a product of 12. So that tells us that we have the following possibilities. So m n is either 1 and 12 or 12 and 1. So essentially we're just looking for factor pairs. We could have 2 and 6 or 6 and 2 or we could have 3 and 4 and 4 and 3. And I believe those are all of the possibilities.